Hi, it's Sandra from Sandra D Imagery, and I'm going to share with you the breakdown and thought process of how I created this image, which I've titled Sorrow. I created this several years ago, but I still find it's a favourite of mine. The inspiration came from the girl that I wanted to use in a composite, and I wasn't sure what the elements were, what was the story, if there was a story, I just wanted to create. Having made that decision to use the girl in a composite, I then chose the background, colour toning with the dress. Now the combination of several textures, colour grading, the elements, for example, the umbrella, the cloud. But as I was processing this and putting it together, a story came to mind, and I can find that happens when you let the imagination roam. What I'll often do is go into my creative stash, look at the different elements or the backgrounds that I have, and sometimes it sparks an idea, and I think, what if, and let's play and see what I can create. And I love that process because it's about letting the imagination roam and just going wherever it takes you. Let's dive in and see how I created this image and it's the second series in my conceptual storytelling. This is my first layer, a texture, and I chose this texture for a reason because I felt the colour would match in with the tones of the dress of the girl. And I'll often start with the texture. It just gives it that depth of colour in the background. And also, too, it's got a little bit of what I call a tactile look to it. And I'll combine textures. I may do that at the beginning. I might add more textures in the middle or towards the end. The next layer is another texture, and it's a paper texture. And I'll turn that layer on. And you can see it just looks like a fine print. But let's change the blend mode. It's on soft light. I'll go to normal. The opacity is 100%. And this is one of my own photos that I photographed somewhere on my travels and I thought would make a great texture overlay somewhere when I'm creating my art. Let's change that back to the blend mode. The next layer is where I added the girl, the element. And this is where the story revolves around her. Now, when I placed her onto the background, I felt that it just didn't work what I had in my mind. And I thought, what can I do with, with this? It looked like it had just been stuck on. And when you're first starting with composites, it's about learning the skill to blend, see what techniques that you can use to soften her or the edges. When I created this a few years ago, I didn't have the skill or didn't know about using the smudge tool to soften the edges of right around her, which helps blend it in with the background. This is at the point where I think, well, what am I going to do with this? I thought by putting the girl on the background it would work, but what are the elements now that I can use with this? So this is where I started to go into my creative stash look at my elements to see if I could get an idea or find some inspiration. Now I'm going to turn that layer off of the girl and come back down now into the order of the layer stack and what it is, the clock. And I added the clock and it's what I call a symbol and I'll explain what that is later. Let's go up to the blend mode. It's soft light and the opacity is at 40%. Let me change it to normal and change it right up to 100%. And you can see it's quite dominant and it's certainly not what I wanted because I wanted it to be in the background as a what I call a support act. I'll just bring that opacity down and bring it back to soft light. Now, then I started to think, well, what am I going to do if I've got the girl in? I quite like the girl sitting over the clock. But again, it just looks like it's stuck on, there's no story. What am I going to do with this? Let's go into the creative stash and see what I can find. And this is where I found this element. And I'll turn this layer off and I'll turn on the next layer in the stack and that's this umbrella. 
I'm going to disable the mask and you can actually see what the element was. I love the umbrella, but I didn't like the, it looks like a turn, a play turntable. It's got the handle. I didn't like that, but it's got the bones there that I can use part of that element to tell the story that I was going to. The reason I love the umbrella also is because it's got a pattern in the umbrella and I thought it would be a good balance with the plain dress of the girl and a pattern of the umbrella and it did work uh, in the end. I'm going to enable that mask and one of the things that I'll often do is just mask out and see what it looks like. If it doesn't work, I'll go and look for another element. What I've done is to blend that element or the umbrella is I've used a hue and saturation with a clipping mask and a clipping mask is only affecting the layer underneath not the whole image. Let's turn the layer on with the girl and coming down here I've used a smart filter and a neural filter and what it does is it does the grunt work in colour matching and to use the neural filter what you do is go up to filter, choose neurofilter, and then go into harmonization. And sometimes it does a fantastic job of blending that in. Let's turn that layer off the filter and on. It's very subtle. It didn't work the way I wanted. So the next layer in the stack is a hue and saturation with a clipping mask. I'll turn that layer on and let's open up the properties and let's have a look. I've adjusted the saturation, minus 42. I really dialed that down. Lightness was a plus seven. I gave it a little bit of a lift. I'll just turn off those properties and have a look. That's how she looked before I used this layer or adjustment layer, and I'll turn them back on. Now it's starting to get what I call the, the tonal range. It looks softer and paler and that's what I'll do quite often in my workflow is I'll desaturate. It's a technique that I'll use quite often. It's about desaturating the colours, then building up the colour depth with different adjustment layers. Now I'm looking at it and thinking, what can I do with that? And one of the techniques that I'll use is what I call the average colour or it's called colour toning here on the layer and you can see the green. I'll turn that layer on and you can see it's very subtle. What it's done is it's just dialed down that paleness on her face and the technique is average colour. To get that, it would be filter, then you'll go to blur and then choose average. And once you've done that, Photoshop looks at the colours and averages out all the colours in that image and comes up with that colour. It's a technique that I'll use like a colour wash, tying in with the elements. Now I'm looking at it and thinking, okay, my colour and tones I'm happy with. That umbrella was just a, a touch of whimsy and quirkiness. But this is where the story started to come for me, thinking, what can I do with this? Let's go on with the layers. I'll turn the next layer on. It's a hue and saturation. And again, I've desaturated because I just wanted to dial that back down. Let's have a look at the properties on it. And it's minus 13 and the lightness is minus 5. It's not a formula. It's about looking at it with your eye and going, does this work with the colours and the tones? Because when I was starting to get an idea for a story, I, I wanted it to be sombre. I didn't want bright colours in there. And this will make sense as I go through the different layers. My next layer is an element that was in the stash. I'll turn the layer on. And the reason that I added the cloud, this is where the idea and the conceptual storytelling came in. By adding that umbrella, to me it was about putting a protection over her. She was sad and that umbrella protected her from the outside world. And it's, it's what I call a symbolic gesture. By adding the cloud, 
and I'll just turn that layer off, I then had an idea that I could actually add rain or tears, again another symbol. I'll turn the layer on and off. Now let's have a look at the masking that I've done on this layer and the actual layer itself. I'll disable the mask and you can see it's a photograph of water drops and I photograph that through a windscreen in a car. And again, I thought this would make a good texture overlay. Enable that mask. What I did was mask out the drops on the side and I only wanted those drops of water coming down from the umbrella. To me, they represented tears. And this is where the idea and the conceptual storytelling comes in. Once you let the imagination roam, you might find that these ideas come in just from nowhere and you think, I'm going to play with it, I'm going to run with it. So now I've got the tears in. What am I going to do next? Let's turn the layer on. And what I've done is added water. To achieve that effect, I used a plugin called Flood. And I'll use that now and then in my art. You could use a photo if you wanted a similar look. The water is another symbol. It represents all the tears and that the water is just building up with that collection of tears. Remember the title of the image is Sorrow. Now, what I've done on the next layer is used Gaussian Blur and I'll turn that layer on. And that's just softened that. What I've done is gone up to Filter, Blur and Gaussian and then I tend to play with the pixels on here. You could put it up to 7.4 and you'll get a preview. I tend to sort of sit around the 1415 depending on the image that I'm working on. I'll just cancel that out. But what I've done is once I've applied that Gaussian Blur, I've dropped the opacity to 65%, but I've also added a mask because I didn't want the blur on the umbrella. I'll enable that mask, and you can see that's quite blurred. And the reason that I didn't want that is I wanted that pattern to come through. I'll enable the mask again. As we move forward, I've added a colour balance, and I'll turn that layer on. And this is where it's given it a little bit more what I call tealy green blue. Let's have a look at the properties. And I've really pushed it over to the cyan, minus 12. And I haven't changed anything on the magenta and the yellow. And I've adjusted the midtones. If I turn that off, you can see now it's got what I call a flat tone to it. By adding that cyan, it just gives it some depth of colour. And particularly because I've got that blue textured background and the water all in there, it's tying together. And that's based on my eye, how I look at colours. Let's turn the next layer on. And what I've done is I've dropped the opacity. Let's turn that layer off and on. I liked that colour balance adding the cyan. But then when I stopped and looked at it, I thought, oh, it's a little bit too blue. So I've done a stamp visible layer, control alt shift E, and I've dropped the opacity down to 70%. That's dialed down that tealy blue green. The next layer is what I call a dodge layer, and I've worked on a gray layer. I'll turn that layer on, and what I've done is just dab some light in different areas just to get the eye drifting around. I'll turn that layer off and on and you can actually see I put it on the dress a little bit on the face. It's a technique that I'll use quite often in my images where I'm dabbing in light to sculpt the light to get the viewer to look around the image, particularly when you're doing composites with a combination of textures, AI art and uh, different elements coming in. So dabbing in light around your image can get the eye bouncing around. When I am doing dodging, I always do it on a grey layer. I never do dodge and burn on the pixelated layer. 
The technique how I use the grey layer is one of the videos in the YouTube channel that you can find. Once I've done that, now I'm starting to look at the image and thinking, what am I happy with? What am I not happy with? And one of the things that I noticed with the water, it just, to me, looked stuck on. And so I need to do what I call a bit of disguise work. And I'll use a Photoshop brush for this. I'll turn the next layer on. And you can see I've just put some subtle mist on the horizon where the water meets that texture. I'll turn it back on again. When I'm doing Photoshop brushwork, be it adding mist, fog or different elements, I'll always do it on a blank layer. I'm coming up to the blend mode and you can actually see it's soft light and the opacity is 74%. Let's change that to normal and let's change that to 100%. And the brush that I've used is a wave brush that's in my stash of brushes, but I love the way it's sort of gave that real swirly look on the horizon. But what I've done is I've used a blend mode and dialed down the opacity. Let's get it back down 74% and a soft light. If you wanted to make it a little bit more definite, you could easily put that up to about 97. Let's say we go up to 100. The thing that I like with doing brushwork on a blank layer it allows me to play with the blend modes. It also allows me to drop the opacity. When I first started using Photoshop brushes, I would do it on the pixelated layer. And if I didn't like that effect, I had a problem trying to get rid of that brushwork. So whenever I'm doing or using any Photoshop brushes, always do it on a blank layer. Now I'm thinking I'm happy with it. It's it's a very sombre atmospheric creation. There's several symbols. For example, the clock represents time and time is ticking. And so the title of the image, as mentioned before, is sorrow. The water that I added is representing tears and those tears and that amount of crying is now um, symbolic in the water. The umbrella was just a whimsical thing that I started with and that's when the idea came. It's That umbrella is like a protection, a bubble around her and within that bubble is where she can feel her feelings. And the cloud also lends itself where the tears are coming from the cloud. It's all about conceptual storytelling. Someone will look at this and not see that story but this is what I was feeling as I was creating this image. Let's have a look at the next layers. I'll turn this layer on and it's a stamp visible layer. This is where I'll stop and think, do I need to add any more elements to this? My style is very much about the colour and minimalist. I don't like too many busy elements in my composites or art but that's a personal choice. The next layer is where I've used Nick plugin and I've done a darken and light and center, which gives a vignette. I'll turn that on and off. By having that vignette, it really draws the viewer's eye in. And this is what I wanted. I wanted the viewer to look in to the image, not drift off the image. The story is all about the girl and the elements that support her. This is what conceptual storytelling is about, is choosing elements, choosing colours. What is the story that you're trying to tell? Or what is the emotion that you're feeling at that moment when you're creating? Sometimes you have the ideas or the vision. Other times you just let your imagination roam and take you wherever it wants to go. It's about having fun and finding that inner creative that can be inside you. The links to different techniques that I've used through this tutorial, have a look at the description and they're provided there for you. Thanks for joining. Have fun being creative.